And just like that, we're back. Matt and Brian bringing you another episode, Views from Section 400 podcast. A lot of stuff going on in the world of sports. NBA playoffs just started. NHL playoffs just started. Baseball's in full swing. Scotty Scheffler's going for another tournament win right after winning the Masters. NASCAR just had an unbelievable ending at Talladega. And we're going to break it all down in this edition of the podcast. Like I said, views from Section 400. Uninterrupted sports conversation over the entire show. Matt and Brian bringing you along for the ride. Jack should be back soon. TBD on his return, though. But... As we always start, it's either winner of the losers or Michael of the week. In this one, we got Michael of the week. So without further ado, Brian, who is your Michael of the week? Yeah, so we um, we kind of shat on the city of Detroit in the last podcast, talking about the NFL draft. I figured I'd just keep it going. So, the, of course, the NBA season ended last week. The Detroit Pistons finished with 14 wins. That was the same amount of wins as the Detroit Lions finished with. So my question for you, if you put the Lions' best five athletes on an NBA court, could they get 14 wins in the NBA? I don't think so. I don't okay. think so at all. Who would they okay. be? Who would they be? Like, Jameson Williams would be one, maybe? Yeah, Jameson Williams. Sam Amon Laporta Ra, playing the forward? Sam Laporta. Uh, Hutchinson at center, probably. You got to throw. It doesn't it poorly. <laughs> It doesn't correlate at all. Like, <laughs> okay, okay. Well, what about can they beat the Pistons in a pickup game if the Pistons are without Kate Cunningham like they were for most of this season? I mean, in the light of keeping it fun, sure. I'd love to see it. <laughs> well, let's be fucking for real, man. <laughs> the Lions are not beating an NBA team in a pickup game of basketball. I don't know. They could, you know, put golf in there for the inbounds passes, run some plays. Dust whatever whoever back there on defense. Bounds plays will not swing the outcome of the game. <laughs> they could. I don't think it. Will. I don't. It's not going to be enough to move the needle. I think in in the light of keeping it fun and talking about it to talk about it, sure, that'd be awesome to see. But is that going to happen? Absolutely not. Uh, like not uh, even close. I think the Pistons win by twenty five plus easy. Okay. Okay. Here is a hope. Here's one that you might have to think about. If you put Dan Campbell and replace him with Monty Williams, do the Pistons win more games? Just as a pure vibes guy. Just as a pure vibes guy. And I guess I can count on him like learning something pertaining to the world of basketball and then how to be how to run stuff in the NBA. But it still might be a shit show. It definitely would be a shit show. And I still think the bar of 14 wins is high. Now, if you set it at nine and a half, can he at least just get to double digits? Maybe. But again, we're talking about something that probably will never, ever happen. Yeah, my only thinking with Campbell is the NBA, they don't play defense in the regular season. So if he just gets the guys to play lockdown defense every game, maybe they get enough offense to to win at least 14. Problem is he's not going to have an offense to put together. Yeah, that's true. Maybe rely on an assistant coach to come up with that, but then there's a reason they're an assistant. Yeah, hey, Pat Riley was an assistant. Hey, maybe it gives a guy, uh, an assistant coach, um, some spotlight to to try and to try and become a coach because Dan Campbell is the coach of the Pistons and has no idea. What are we talking about here, man? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, mean, this, I, saw, I saw this tweet last night and it got me in my own rabbit hole. So I needed to hear another person's opinion. So I knew it wasn't crazy. Yeah, I mean, no, I don't think Dan Campbell can go to the Pistons and coach them with the same roster and win more than 14 games. Would they win a couple games? Sure, just on pure that it's a long game or a long season. But would he win more than the 14? No, I think there's going to be a significant drop off in coaching expertise if you put Campbell there and – him being a vibes guy doesn't move the needle enough to get him over the 14 win mark. That's my opinion on it. Now, in terms of can the Lions roster best five beat the Pistons roster best five in a pickup game? No, I think that also cannot happen at all. And I think the Pistons roster wins that by 25 plus. And no, don't throw. Do I think if the 
Pistons head coach coached the Lions, <laughs> and if Dan Campbell coached the Pistons <laughs> in the five on five pickup game, I still think the Pistons win. But it, maybe that's the closest one. Yeah, all I'm saying is Dan Campbell would not have let a team lose 28, 29 in a row like Monty Williams did. I, I, I just really hate the Pistons. Yeah. Who cares, man? <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. I don't care about the city of Detroit. Anyway, that's Brian's Michael of the Week. My Michael of the Week is a shock because I thought the Mets were down and out. They started, what, 0-5. They had that video come out, and it was like empty stadium, 0-5. No one here, raining, getting shut out, getting no hit. And it just seemed like it was going to be a long season. And they've turned it around nicely. And I'll give them credit where credit's due. They just went out to L.A. and won two of three against the Dodgers team that everyone has touted, National League champions, and a shot to win the World Series. So props to them. They went out there and did it. Starling Marte, it looks like a completely different player than he did last year. I think that guy was barely batting his weight, and now he's a little under 300 or maybe in the 270 range. So he's picked it up. Pete Alonzo's picked it up. Lindor's still batting under 200, but I guess he's turned it around to some extent. Um, I know they lost today to the Dodgers, but, yeah, surprised that the Mets turned it around this quickly with who I thought was a joke of a manager, and they've got worse as a pitching staff, They're completely worse. And But, again, it's the Mets. We all know they fall apart. We all know it happens, and we all know it's coming. Yeah, it may be coming, but for now I'm going to have fun. And Mendoza is a great vibes guy. Speaking of vibe guys, like a complete, <laughs> a complete 180 from Buck Showalter. Like he's, he's pulling off double steals and clapping in the dugout, and the young guys like him. Unfortunately, one of those young guys, Francisco Alvarez. Uh, is he done for the year? No, he's done until probably June. He tore a ligament in his thumb rounding first base on an errant throw. Yeah. So that's, that's tough. Injury. Yeah, T- Tomas Nito's back in the big leagues. He's, uh, he's He'll be catching with Omar Narvaez. But yeah, Lindor's hitting over 300 since we gave him the Trey Turner treatment, and they gave him a standing ovation when he was struggling. Did they do that? They oh, did. Happy cats. <laughs> it works. If it, it works, I mean, yeah, and I mean, it, same thing too. The Mets, their city connect jerseys weren't bad. I, no, I actually, I, I like to them. Tell so they're doing stuff right. Apparently, uh, Nimmo and Lindor had a big say in the jerseys, and I don't understand why more MLB teams didn't do that because then maybe a lot of these wouldn't look disgusting. Well, it would make sense. I mean, like the the players usually for the most part aren't from the city they play in and the jersey is the city connect so it would make sense not to get fucking feedback from the players who are not from the city but in yeah. terms of making it look like here is why it's connected to the city now make it look cool based on whatever that okay great go get the feedback from the players on that stance but i understand why they don't get feedback of the city from the guys like Philly isn't asking JT Real Mutos from like Oklahoma where where he th- what he thinks about the Liberty Bell and Independence Hall and this, that, and the third. It's just not happening. Yeah, but just to make them look cool. Like you can there's some decent yeah. concepts and the jerseys just look ugly. Like the Mets one, they have the train tracks for the uh the pinstripes on there. That's a nice little or the subway you, tracks Bryce, for the pinstripes. Like Bryce Harper would be a great guy to ask. Yeah. They, they wouldn't have looked <laughs> you wouldn't have seen those Sesame Street looking blue and orange or blue and yellow. So it's horrendous. They look like the Philadelphia Union jerseys. <laughs> they, they look they look like the Philadelphia Union jerseys if a seventh grader designed the Philadelphia Union jerseys. Yep, they're pretty bad. That uh, although just like the sole hat, like the solo hat with just like regular clothes, I don't think it's horrible. Like the hat is fine, but the whole jersey outfit concept, like it's just it's it's bad. It's yeah. really just they, yeah. They, that, they would, the Liberty Bell design's cool. Like the hat, yeah. the hat's cool, and the, the, it's a nice shade of blue, at least on the hat. Someone did a re-edit of it, like with like a reddish gray white, and it actually the design itself looked fine. It's the blue, yellow, whatever the fuck they tried throwing all together that really just is not great. Yeah, that's something that you can easily ask the players, "Would you wear this?" And they're like, "No, change the colors." They're like, "No, this is horrendous. Please change it." And it gets changed. But 
either way, they didn't do it. The Mets, I guess, win the city, the new city connects. Did they have the best one? I don't even, or, or is it just the Phillies and the Mets who got theirs released so far this year? This year, I think it might just be Phillies and Mets. Out of all of them out there right now, the, the Astros is kind of cool. It's, it's also cartoony, but it's like the space city. It's like gray and orange. Yeah, but they could always do something cool because it's like space and that shit. Yeah, yeah, so but like can... besides them, you have you have the cherry blossoms for the Nationals, which have grown on me, but I don't love. And and now they're they've grown on people, and now they're getting rid of them. Yep. <laughs> so that's weird. Yeah, it's just a very odd, very odd promotion that hasn't gone very well for the MLB or Nike. Who runs the Nationals? Uh, the like the owner. Yeah, is it a sports group? It's uh, it's Ted, Ted Lerner, Todd Lerner. It's the Lerner family. They're a bunch of real estate moguls in DC. Gotcha. So they run. Do they run on the Caps as well? No, the Caps is uh, Ted Leonidas, and he runs Monumental, like that whole fucking thing. It's a monopoly. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now, and now the Redskins or the Commanders is uh, the Harris Blitzer Group. Yep. They ran what? Who was it? Dan Schneider out of town? Dan Schneider, that guy is just... I think he's still trying to sell his Potomac house just because it's the, like... Rose showed... I showed Rose the interior and she said this is the most hideous thing I've ever seen. I don't know if he's ever going to sell this house. It's like, yeah. He's going to have to lower the price probably a shit ton if he wants to get rid of it. But either way, off topic enough there. That's the Michael of the Week. You always get some surprising or ridiculous conversation. Dan Campbell coaching the Pistons, horrendous Philadelphia City Connect jerseys. It's all all on the table when we're doing the Michael of the Week. But like I said, Michael of the Week, look out for the clips that we've already posted on Instagram, and obviously this will get posted as well. And then winners and losers in the next one, always stay in for that. That's always brings some pretty funny stuff. So like I said, always presented by Museum Section 400. If anyone wants to sponsor it, hit us up, let us know. We'll set up a part partnership at, and you can sponsor the michael of the week or the winners of the week but like nonetheless it's what we do michael of the week we'll shut that down moving on to the nba and we had day one day two was today i didn't watch much of it but we had day one and i guess we'll just jump right into a couple of the games here because the Cavs blew out the magic and that's the easiest game in round one the Magic are a bunch of frauds. They're too young. They're not – they're good, sure, but I think it's a lack of the talent in the East and a lack of all the injuries or, or the surplus of injuries that happened. Like, Embiid was out the whole year and that whole stuff. So, I think it was just both of those combinations that kind of just propelled a team who's young, kind of talented. They should not be a five seed. And – they have no shot against the Cavs, as we saw in game one. Yeah, it's really just Paolo and Franz uh, Wagner. But Paolo, second player ever in Magic history to put up 20 points in his playoff debut. Shaq was the only other one. So shout out him. And then Donovan Mitchell. I think it's time we start talking about Donovan Mitchell as one of the great playoff performers of all time. This was his 21st 30-point game in the postseason. And he is seventh all time in postseason points per game. All time. I I think people like respect him as a playoff player, but it's about like we have to talk about him in terms of the playoff greats here. Let me, these are the players above him. You forget everything he did out in Utah. Yeah. He was running it up on Utah for a while. Yeah. Like that, that bubble series, him and Jamal Murray just going back and forth with some of the best basketball, at least playoff basketball I've watched in my life. But, yeah, the only guys ahead of Mitchell right now, Devin Booker, which is surprising, LeBron, Jerry West, KD, Allen Iverson, and Michael Jordan. It's like <laughs> all Hall of Famers. Yeah, and then him. I mean, sure, I'll give it to him all day. Definitely a great performance out of him and continue great performances. But does anybody care about great performances if you can't win? That's true. It, it, he really hasn't had the team with him. He hasn't. But, you know – you got, you got to win. You got to find a way to get it done. You, you string in all these – like, it's the same thing with Embiid with these 50-point games and these crazy stat lines. And a guy doesn't win. Yeah, that's true. 
I just I always so think about to validate it when you like you can be talked about, you can be there, but to validate it to that next level, you can't. It it'll always fall back on being able to win. Yeah, there was that there was that rumor back when he got traded to the Cavs that the Knicks might go after him. And I'm just thinking like if if you put him on the Knicks right now, that that's a team that could challenge the Celtics and the Bucks. Like very with easily. As well? Like yeah, everybody with... on the Knicks and just add Mitchell. Yep. Yeah, that's that would I mean the Knicks are a good team to begin with. Um you add Donovan Mitchell, of course. Of yeah. course. Just a shame they didn't pull that trigger. I is it so like I, and I get it. The Knicks are playing well and they are good and they do have a one oh series lead against my Sixers. We'll get into that in a minute. But isn't their ownership group also like pretty shisty and horrible? Yeah, I I forget what their owner but they they have one of the worst owners in sports. <laughs> I, I gotta look up his name now because it's it's uh it's eluding me. But yeah, this guy he he kicked out What's his name? James Dolan. James Dolan. That's yeah, that, who it is. That guy's a scumbag. Uh, <laughs> who was who the guy that played with Ewing? Um, the enforcer type guy. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, no, this was a Knicks legend. Charles Oakley. He kicked Charles Oakley out of a game and, like, banned him from MSG. What? Like, a Knicks legend just decided to ban from MSG because he critiqued the team. But, yeah, James Dolan, is he's a scumbag. So, yeah, either way, sucks they could have got Donovan Mitchell. And uh, Mitchell's on the Cavs, and the Cavs blow out the Magic in game one, and the Cavs should roll to a sweep here. I mean, I don't see this going any other way but a sweep, but maybe the Magic get lucky on one. But as long, I think as long as Donovan Mitchell's playing every game and playing like that, I it, this has sweep written all over it. Yeah, I think the Magic will win one or two at home. They'll, they won't get swept. You think they'll get one at home? I don't. I don't. Th- I think two. No shot. Two. I think they'll, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, they'll win. Well, it depends. Game three is going to be the big one because if they can win game three, they might be able to win game five. And then it's two two going back to Cleveland. Yeah. Well, I don't think they win game four. So yeah, they win. I think they'll win game three, lose game four, and then lose game five in Cleveland. So yeah, it'll be a gentleman sweep. Three one going back. So you don't see any scenario where it's two zero, then two two going, you know, back to Cleveland. I don't either. I see sweep all day long here. Maybe Cleveland doesn't want this going back to Cleveland. They want to wrap it up in Orlando and move on to the next round. They know they don't need to waste their time with this team and just stay locked in, stay focused get it done in four and move on. That's what I think their mindset needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. Jalen Suggs might need to start dropping like 30 points a game. That's what I'm saying. If if Donovan Mitchell's taken over like that, there's even, even, even if Panchero is having like an awesome game, like Donnie's just going to be right there to, to keep him in check and and make sure they don't get it. Yeah. But I want to move on to the nuts game because I actually had the Suns winning the series and, I'm sorry. I'm familiar with Anthony Edwards' game, but Minnesota Timberwolves, I was not familiar with y'all's game. They are here, and they're ready to play. Anthony Edwards is him 100%. What an absolute dog that guy is. He doesn't care about anything. He'll talk to shit, shit to KD, talk shit to anybody, and I love it, dude. I love that dog mentality. Yeah, Ant had 33. He almost outscored the Suns in the third quarter, had 18 in the third quarter, Suns had 21. He he's a dog. He can definitely lead them to at least this series win, maybe another one. I just I still don't know if they have enough behind him. But I where mean, do where do where do they run into what what team do they run into where they slow down? Well, they they won't beat the Nuggets. Uh, well, and they might beat the Thunder. Thunder or T Wolves. That would just be that would just be SGA and Ann Edwards trading buckets back and forth. Yeah, yeah, I just – yeah, and then you have, you have Dort to guard Edwards, and he's a pretty solid defender, but Edwards will guard SGA and cause him issues. I don't know. I think Chet – at the end of the day, I like Chet more in the trenches than I do Carl Anthony Towns. I think Cat still has that bitch mentality a little bit. Is that is that a seven-game series? Could be. I, yeah, I think the home team wins every game of that series. So, yeah, I guess the Thunder would take that. But I don't see the Clippers being the – Beating Minnesota and 
the Mavericks laid an egg today. We'll get to that. But, yeah, I don't know. Either way, when does this uh, Suns T Wolf series wrap up? The, the, I mean, the Suns surely respond, right? Yeah, I, I think this it'll go six. The Suns will get two at home. They have to with all that talent. Like Devin Booker and Bradley Beal did not play well in Game One, and they lost by what twelve. Yeah, even even if the T Wolves go up two zero, it's they, Phoenix got to win two right back there down in Phoenix. And then you're going back to Minnesota tied 2 2. I mean, this could be a seven game series where every home home gate home team wins. Yep. So. Yeah, just it's always the lingering doubt that Beal or Kevin Durant gets a little banged up and then the series is over. And you can always usually tell like if Min- if Phoenix lets one go and it's like Minnesota steals one of Phoenix, that's where you'll you know, Katie will start getting that limp in his leg. Yep. Start limping up and down the court. Also, KD is guarding Anthony Edwards most of the time because Devin right. Booker just can't guard a chair. So yeah. you, <laughs> you can't put KD's 35-year-old legs on Anthony Edwards for seven games and expect him to hold up. Yeah. What's Edwards, 24? Yeah. Might be 23. Yeah, he's very young. So a lot of energy and not scared of the moment. I mean, he's here and he's ready for it, so. Love me some good Ann Edwards up and down the floor. Now moving on to, I guess, the <laughs> annoying game of the day or the weekend, Sixers-Knicks. And, look, the Sixers came out strong, had a lead, and Bead looked dominant to start that game out. I mean, they grew a lead and grew one quickly. They were keeping pace with the Knicks. The Knicks honestly started out bad. Jalen Brunson didn't have the best game he could have had. And people are like, oh, this is over because Brunson's not going to play like that. but Josh Hart is not dropping 20 plus points a night in this series either. So I think everyone needs to relax and be his health is obviously a major concern. It was coming into this even more. Now he did gut it out and play the rest of the game. He his knee was probably on fire after the fact. I, I can't imagine what that felt like, but at the same time, Dude, it's not the all-star game. What the hell are you doing throwing balls off the backboard, trying to be Harlem Globetrotters, and then landing on your bad leg? Like, what? Like what? You got to play smart. You got to know what – your body's limited, obviously. So play to your strengths on what you can do with with a, you know, being con- conscious of, of your injuries. Instead, he's out there throwing lobs off the backboard – playing like the Harlem Globetrotters, and he goes and gives everybody a heart attack when he <laughs> falls on the ground grabbing his knee on a surgically repaired left knee. It was absolutely a heart attack central. But he did come back, played well, got the team back in the game, didn't have enough, obviously, at the end to get it done. It's tough. Jalen Brunson's going to play better as the series goes on. Hopefully Embiid can stay involved enough to keep the Sixers there. And Josh Hart is not dropping 20 plus. He might get the 10 rebounds. I Josh Hart will start bricking those threes that we saw him make. Yeah, it's not only Josh Hart. Miles McBride had 21. And it was the it was the first time I hear another douche chant, dude. I'm gonna mute my TV. <laughs> it was the first time he scored over 20 points in his career when he hasn't played over 35 minutes. And I think he only played 28. So it wasn't even like near there. But, yeah, I mean, Brunson, he scored 22. You can expect him to get, like, 30. So maybe that makes up for the difference. But it makes realize... up the... They're not – Hart and McBride are not doing that the rest of the series. I'm sorry. And if they do, I'm willing to die on my stance of saying they're not going to. It's, they won't do it on the road. At home, you never know. But on the road, it's going to be a lot tougher to replicate that. I didn't realize that was – it, the first time in this game, Joel Embiid has dunked since he's come back from injury. That's another. Just he plays stupid. Plays stupid. You got you to gotta be aware, man. Yeah, they, they need him to. He needs to somehow stay healthy and be playing like 40 minutes a game if the Sixers have any chance of making it run here. And I just, after, after game one, I just, I don't see that happening. No. And look, if the Sixers go and win game two. I think they can win both at home, and then who the hell knows what happens after that. But if they lose tomorrow, I guess is when that game is, then it's 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 a wrong, long way back. They have to win tomorrow. They they kind of have to for they any shot. Gonna but, need Batum to to show up again and drop twenty twenty three twenty four. 
it's more of just like like they just got to be locked in and B can't play like an idiot and just play solid defense. They they they're so frustrating to watch because they turn it on and turn it off, and it's like just be locked in the whole game. Yeah, that's all you need to do. But anyway. I don't want to get too crazy because it is game one, game two tomorrow or today when you guys watch this. But let's wait and see what happens game two before I start pressing panic buttons. <laughs> Moving on to the Lakers and Nuggets. Brian, why is this series over? LeBron and Anthony Davis combined for 59, 20, and 13. And the whole second half wasn't very close. If they're going to play that well at their age and give you that many minutes and you're not able to make it a close game, when Jamal Murray's not shooting the ball well and Michael Porter Jr.'s not doing too much, it's just I don't see a way they can figure it out. I don't either. I mean, look, people have the Nuggets winning it all and, like, guaranteed Western Conference Finals. So it's always, oh, how are you going to write off LeBron? But. It's just not the same anymore. Yeah. Also, Anthony Davis and LeBron are getting up there in age. The Lakers are one and eight in their last nine games in Denver. So that altitude might be causing them some issues. And then in a long series, I don't know. So what? You think they're going back to LA down 2 0? Yeah. They'll go back to LA down 2 0. LeBron will pull something out of his ass, win game three. But then game four, they're going to, the Nuggets will respond and the series will be over. 3-1 going back to Denver. I could see that. I could totally see that. But but yeah, game three, bet on LeBron's player props. Cause if they're if they're down too well, because he will he'll go yeah, crazy. I think LeBron will, you know, he's still good enough to where in a return home game the crowd will be into it. He'll be into it in LA. He'll pull something out of his ass, like you said, to magically win. But then game four, the Nuggets will respond. And Lakers just don't have the depth to keep up with that team. No. Yeah. I mean, they have the starting five's decent. And then beyond that, once you're relying on really Hachimura to make a big corner three to get you within seven points, it's just the palms are getting too sweaty. Yeah. The palms are getting too sweaty. So, again, a lot of these we need to wait and see. But that, that's probably going back to LA 2 0 Nuggets lead. But. Jumping over to Sunday, Heat Celtics. With no Jimmy, this isn't even a series. I have the Cavs Magic as a sweep, and I have this as a sweep. Am I wrong? No. I mean, we've talked about the Celtics' depth. They had four guys with at least 15 points. And without Jimmy Butler, the Heat, it's Tyler Hero running around like a lunatic and then Pam Adebayo uh, breaking mid-range shots. So it's they don't have anything. You like Bam Adebayo's game. I think it's a little overrated. I I did, but now it doesn't – I don't know. I think he needs to handle the ball more and pass more. There's a lot of just times he spots up for mid-range, and he, every single time he back rims it. He tries to be Embiid. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's a good way to put it. And Embiid has a great mid-range game. That's why he can do it. Yep. Bam Adebayo Bam. did win a skills competition, so he's skilled, but I just, yeah, it's a little overrated. A little overrated, right? And Because I thought I liked it, too. I was like, oh, this guy's got a good little game going, but it hasn't seemed to work out. And without Jimmy Butler, and is Jimmy Jimmy's out this whole series, right? I mean, yeah, he, he may be out for the whole playoffs. Yeah, well, I guess this series would be the playoffs. but this, Yeah, it will be. So I got this as a sweep, and I got – like I said, magic, uh, Cavs, Cavs sweeping that. But let's jump over to a game that I think a team will respond and will force a game seven. That's the Mavericks and the Clippers. Obviously, the Clippers take game one. James Harden, he looked pretty electric. I mean, did he not? Yeah, he, he, he really hard. did. He definitely laid off the strip clubs last night and showed up ready to play, and it showed. It was Saturday night, too. I mean, yeah. props to who got in his year? <laughs> really showed some restraint. And without Kawhi, the Clippers just completely dismantled the Mavericks. Yeah. Uh, who who would you put more of the blame on the Mavs side, Luka or Kyrie? They played well. They they had 64 combined. I think it's Jason Kidd. The, who, the rest of the team. Yeah, Jason Kidd and the rest of the team, really. P.J. Washington played all right. But I think besides P- 
TJ, Washington, and then Luca and Kyrie, nobody had over four points. Daniel Gafford couldn't get it done. <laughs> I don't think that guy is uh... – They traded for him, man. They traded for him. Yeah, I, I have to look into his career stats, but it wouldn't surprise me if he averages almost as many fouls per game as points per game. Doesn't that guy have a foul out problem? Yeah, he fouls out almost every game. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's unbelievable, but – yeah, I, I what you don't agree? You don't think the Mavs can turn it around and get this to seven? I think it'll go. I think it'll go six or seven. At least six. You can always count on Luca and or and or Kyrie to get you a game. So you give him at least two. Right. And you think Luca can get him one? Kyrie can get him one. And I think Luca is. I personally, Luca. I don't. I don't know where I put him. Definitely a top five player, and I might have him in a top three in the NBA. Agree yeah. or disagree? Yeah. Some might say Jokic, Luka. It depends where you put LeBron now. Well, where do you put Embiid? Is Embiid, is it 1-2, Jokic, Embiid? No, I think you go... Oh, I think you go Jokic, Giannis. Luka? Yeah, Luka. And then you have like a tier of... SGA, Anthony Edwards, and Bede. And I guess LeBron's still there. And Curry. But yeah, I put Luke in the top three. So putting him in the top three, at least for me, says he can get two games. Kyrie can get one. That leaves a game seven. There you go. The issue that's, there how is, I read, that's how I read that. Yeah, the only issue there is you're back in crypto.com arena. Which, by the way, the lighting in that place today, I, I watched the game for like two minutes on my phone. And I don't know if it was my so, phone fucking up, but that it was absolutely horrid. It looked like an why? asylum in there. Like, the, it just wasn't bright at all. It looked foggy. It, I don't know if it was the ABC cameras or what was going on, but that place looked grim. ABC cameras are bad. They, like, that, that viewing experience, for me personally, I don't like it. Yeah, for the finals, they're normally great, but... Like, for football and specifically college football, they're always horrible. Oh, horrible. I still don't understand how they're that bad. ESPN gets all the, like, SEC nonsense games and or just a lot of college football, and it's a horrible viewing experience. Some of them on ESPN, like, when they're in a dome on ESPN, it has to be on ESPN, it's fine. But, like, ESPN U cameras specifically and the ABC cameras are horrible. I don't get it. Yeah, horrible. But keep moving it on here. Pacers, Bucks, and then Pelicans, Thunder. That's going on right now as we record. So I don't know how this one's going to play out. But I think with Giannis out, I like the Pacers. Uh, I got some bad news for you. Bad news? The Bucks are up by 20 in the second quarter right now. There you go. There you uh, go. And then did the other game start or is that uh, that's No, the that, that's the nightcap. Yep. When does that start? Uh, nine probably nine thirty. Yeah, so Damian Lillard already has twenty points, and we're halfway, th- not even halfway through the second quarter. Just not even. They're just not worried about that. All right, so Bucks will wrap that one up without <laughs> without Giannis and dude Pelicans Thunder. <laughs> this is wild because I think at the beginning of the year we both kind of said Thunder, but I also said Pelicans as a sneaky uh future play as well so interesting how we how we see that here and i think jack had the timberwolves he did so again and we handed that out in like october so cool to see all our teams in the playoffs yeah and in the west too where it's a lot harder to get into the playoffs yeah i know the pelicans had to dig their way through through the uh play in tournament but you know is zion done for the playoffs because that was really kind of a big reason why I had had kind of circled them as a team that could make a little bit of noise. Yeah, it's the classic NBA team being very vague and the media being too, I guess, scared to ask further questions. But he's out for two weeks and he'll be reevaluated. So you already know they're going to do a reevaluation if they somehow make it that far and he'll be out for the rest of the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, that was a big reason. Obviously, I didn't take into account his... Uh shitty health but he was big reason why i had picked him but 
Yeah, I mean, I know I have the Pelicans future, but I also was with you on the Thunder future, and the Thunder are just a more fun of team. And if Zion's not playing, there's no reason to uh, to root that on, right? Yeah, I think this thing ends in a sweep. This this might be my only sweep. I, I do think you know, Miami. Two sweep predictors. Yeah, this I, is I think, your only one. I think Miami's going to get one at home. I, I can see a classic like Game Four. They're down three zero. And Spolstra is like, we're not getting swept, boys. And then they just come up and play enough defense to get one. And then they get blown out in game five. And I think, <laughs> Go back I think to the, no reason. Yeah, I think the Magic had to create enough of a season where they deserve to get one. So the basketball gods will give them one. We'll see what happens. That's the fun of it. Yeah, come back they, next week and see what it is to fact check us. They're, uh, all three Pelicans fans in the world are going to be sad after this sweep. Yeah, not a lot down there. I mean, you were in D, uh, New Orleans for your bachelor party. Were a lot of a lot of Pelicans buzzed down there? Couldn't say there was. <laughs> not really. Not, not really at all. It's good stuff. But, yeah, I mean, that's the NBA, dude. A lot of fun series, a lot of like, – on both sides. I know the West is more competitive than the East is, but still a lot of fun series. But another playoff season that's going on right now, and that's the NHL. We had that kickoff this weekend. Saturday was kind of when I was expected. The Hurricanes beat the Islanders, and the Islanders probably don't have a shot in that series. The Bruins smoked the Maple Leafs, and I'll let you touch on that a little bit because the Maple Leafs are your squad. And, you know, I personally don't love the Bruins either, but uh, the Maple Leafs don't look like they have a shot. Yeah, it was a little concerning to watch. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I will I will say – it could have been a lot different. Austin Matthews hit the post when they were down one nothing on a wide open net. Would have been one one and a whole different game. And then from there it just kind of snowballed. So I'm not not too worried about it. They say a series doesn't start till the home team loses. But I am a little concerned. And also going back to the Hurricanes, we kind of shat on North Carolina as a sports state when we were trying to find the worst sports city. Those fans showed up. and Did we say Charlotte? Well, first of all, is the Carolina Hurricanes play in Charlotte? They play in Raleigh, which I can't say I'm too familiar with uh, North Carolina geography, but I can't imagine it's too far. Yeah, I don't know. But the, the <laughs> Hurricanes are they're, – they're plus 550 to win the Cup. They have the best odds to win. They're a good team. I didn't realize they were that good. I got the avalanche still, though. Well, I guess we'll get into that tomorrow or uh, for the today game. But I saw the Panthers were up, then it was tied. Did the Lightning win that? The Panthers held, held on. So Jack's future is. is that would be, a, that could be a nuts series, dude. Yeah, the Lightning always show up in the playoffs. They do. They were talking about their coach, the Lightning's head coach. I think not 18 playoff games, 18 playoff series, he's won. You're considered a you're considered a solid coach if you won 18 playoff games. Yeah. He's won 18 series yeah, to go along with two Stanley Cups. That's crazy. Or maybe got, three. I don't know. It's either two or three. I think just two. You gotta win what four? Four wins you the cup? I don't what? in the in the Tampa Bay teams that went to the cup? No, I think I think just in general, four four series is what it takes, right? Because you got first round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First so. round, second round, cup finals. Wait, no, it's the first round, second round, then the conference finals, and then the last, the fourth series is the Stanley Cup. Yeah, so you win four, and then you win the yeah, cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the he, equivalent of like four and a half Stanley Cups. Yeah, but he's only won, I think, two. Yeah. Maybe, maybe three, but I think two. But still, and another thing that's cool the NHL, these coaches do not have long shelf lives. This guy's been there for over 10 years. I think he's on his 12th season. It's pretty long, dude. Yeah, they've been consistently good. Bro, these NHL coaches get – it's like a fucking revolving door. How they're, like, on a new team every year, like, get shuffled around. Yeah, I think the Caps fired Barry Trotz, like, a year after they won the Cup. Like, isn't Peter Laviolette the Rangers head coach now? I think he is. Like, what? Yeah. Tortorella is the Flyers head coach. Like, these guys literally jump to whoever, flip around, and 
props to the guy, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I don't know his name off the top of my head, but props to the Tampa Bay lightning uh, head coach for being at the helm for 10 plus years, winning 18 playoff series and has at least two Stanley cups to show for it. Yeah. Shout out Tampa low key. Pretty decent sports city. Yeah. Tom Brady got him a Super Bowl ring. Rays are always decent. Rays have been relevant, just not good enough to win one. Couldn't get it done in the Mickey Mouse year, right? They were in the World Series in the Mickey Mouse year, right? Yeah, that was the uh, the Brett Phillips and then Randy Rosarina tripped around third and that yeah. crazy play. Yeah, and then Randy Rosarina was like doing like the crossing his crossing arms thing. Yeah, I remember that. That was such a fucking bullshit season, dude. Sixty <laughs> games. Give me a break. Anyway. But we touched on Lightning, obviously, and then Caps Rangers. Rangers get it done with these. I mean, the Caps are just happy to be here. Yep, I think <laughs> the worst team to ever make the playoffs, so they're just happy to be here. Tom Wilson, again, went to the penalty box twice, so he's getting his playoff penalties just like he is in the regular season. I'm sure Ovi will get a couple, and then maybe Oshie will score a couple. But... Is this a sweep, or does Ovi get at least one win at home? Yeah, they got to win one. They got to win one, right? Yeah, this may be Ovi's last playoff series. Oh. He's got to come back for next year. Oh, he'll he'll be back, but I don't know if they'll make the playoffs. He <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> might not make the playoffs, dude. That's a, that's funny. What do we got as we're recording here? Yeah, yeah, Avalanche. Avalanche. I am Avalanche, a huge Avalanche fan now this whole series because the Flyers, I don't even want to get into their absolute debacle, who – by the way, it's at the end of the first period, three to three. Three to three. I mean, the <laughs> Jets were a solid team this year, so that's just a nuts series. That's actually a nuts series. We'll see what happens there. I, the Flyers debacle. I'm all in on the Avalanche. Let's see what they do. And then Predators Canucks. I know the Canucks had like a historic year this year. They were like unreal, and they weren't supposed to be. Canada. Canada's got some teams in there. Is this is this the year Canada finally? I guess. We could say, is it the year it finally comes home? Who was the last team to do it? It's been a while. Because the Maple Leafs really? haven't done it in forever. Montreal. Canadians would be my guess back in like 07 maybe or 05. Because yeah, they've been bad for a while too. Yeah. I want to say it's the Canadians back in like 05 or 07. Who was the last team for Canada? 1993, the Canadians. So it was the Canadians. Just about a decade uh, Decade off. Yeah, least likely to win the Stanley Cup, Capitals, Islanders, Predators. So the Caps and the Islanders, Eastern Conference, right at the top of that list. Yeah, the Islanders are playing some good hockey right now, too. We'll see what happens, but I think the Capitals, they probably have no shot. That's why it's so bad, because the Flyers would have given the Rangers such a tougher series. Well, they should have not lost eight in a row. Yeah, eight in a row with like twelve, like fourteen games to play, like a bunch of freaking frauds. But that's what you get. Who knows? Maybe it was an inside job, and they were forced to do that. Maybe, maybe it's a little weird. But yeah, I mean, that's the two playoffs in their respective sports of NBA and the NHL. Let us know which one you guys are looking out for and looking forward to more. I know there's a lot of NBA fans out there. And there might not be as many as NBA, but I do know there's some NHL truthers out there. So let us know what you'll be watching, who you're rooting for, who you think is going to win. So that'll be some good stuff there. But other stories, other quick, so to say, one hitters we can jump through here before I guess we kind of wrap it up. Yeah, so obviously I think one of our losers of the week was Anthony Rendon. And I think after we called him out, he his last 10 games he was batting 381. I happened to pick him up in fantasy baseball because I'm in desperate need of a third baseman. Thought I had my season-long fix. Thought Rendon, after getting called out by reporters, fans, you name it, he was getting called out. Thought he turned it around, batting 381 over the last 10 games. Jogs down to first base, pulls something in his hamstring. He's on the IL for 10 days, right when it looks like he's turning around. Injured list. Hate to see that because now I am back on the market for a third baseman. If you know any third baseman out there that I could possibly pick up, let me know in the comments below because I am all ears, open ears on that front. But, yeah, in the interview afterwards, he said 
that somebody asked him, and I'm pretty sure he said it doesn't feel great. So not the report I wanted to hear. Not looking good. Yeah, he, was, he was playing too well. The expectations got too high. People thought he was going to be a top however many player in the league again. And he said, well, lights are a little too bright. Got to fake this hamstring pull real quick. Here's a question for you. Who will be on the IL longer, Anthony Rendon or our buddy Jack? Probably Rendon. I mean, Jack's been on it for at least the last week. Rendon just went on uh, this morning or yesterday afternoon. So. Well, the, the week counts for Jack. So it'll be like Jack's full-time versus Rendon's full-time. Oh, um, I think Rendon still. That guy will melt that injury pride for about a month. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised that he's on the 10-day IL because I wouldn't surprise me if he just went into the trainers and said, put me on the 60-day. I'm done for the year. Yeah, I, I don't see it. I mean, the Angels aren't playing horrible, though, right? Yeah, and the AI West is a shit show right now. I think the Rangers yeah, are in so first like, place. You know, he could come back and they could be somewhat relevant. Yeah, then again, <laughs> it's the Angels, so you don't you don't really expect much. It's the Angels, and not only do you not expect much from them, it's Anthony Rendon. That guy does not care about baseball. Although he started playing well over his last 10 to shove people up. Now he's injured again. But, yeah, I see on here as well, Harbaugh tattoo. What the hell is going on there? Yeah, Jim Harbaugh made sure he would never forget Michigan's perfect season. He got a tattoo saying 15-0 and with the Michigan logo. Props to the guy. I mean, that's electric. He went undefeated and won a national title. And Michigan hasn't done that in a very long time. So he yeah, got he, it done for them. He's one of the few people in the world that actually got a championship tattoo and didn't regret it after all those. Yeah. I mean, he did it after the fact. Like yeah. any smart person would do. But there's obviously a lot of dumb people out there who do it before it actually happens. And that's why it turns into a regretful decision. Yeah, probably about 12% of the city of Dallas has done it once in their life and regretted it. Yeah, I can't imagine. So ridiculous there. But yeah, Aiden Holiday to Alabama, you probably hate to see that. Yeah, fucking Judas. He he entered the transfer portal, which was fine. And then he transferred to Alabama, which sucks. It really does. But then he went to the media and said, he said, you know, I, I feel like I came to Auburn with a plan and Bruce sold me a plan. And then he didn't get, he basically said he didn't get the ball enough and he wasn't used as much. Well, here's some stats for you, Aiden. You were third on the team in shot attempts per game, second overall in usage, and first in three-point attempts. The next closest player had 50 less. He was 11th on the team in field goal percentage. So maybe he should have played a little bit better. And I know, I know he's just a kid. He's, I think, 19 still. So I can't be too mad at him. But when he's going to say something as dumb as that, like, you had every chance in the world. He, I said so many things like Aiden Holloway should be shooting the ball more. I like that he's – I like they're using him a lot. But he's passing up open shots, and he's, he was just rattled a little bit. His confidence wavered. And then he blamed it on the coaching and the fact he wasn't used enough. And that just it didn't sit right with me. Yeah, I mean, he's a young kid, right? Like, obviously, he's going to get a little rattled by the media. He's going to say – he plays for Alabama now, so he's going to dig at Auburn a little bit to to hype himself up. So I don't think it's much to dig into. It's probably a bunch of bullshit that he's spewing. It's just to make him look better. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. like, he's 19. I'm not going to get too upset about it. It was just – it was kind of scummy. It was it was a scummy thing to yeah, say. Oh, total scumbag move, but I see why he's doing it. And again, you know, he probably didn't even mean it. It was more of just 19 years old. I mean, dude, you do a lot of shit. I'm 26. I do a lot of dumb shit. <laughs> I don't want to think that 19. Yeah. yeah. Well, the jungle is not going to be very appreciative of those comments. So his no, first game back in Auburn. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a flu or sickness. <laughs> Can't make it. To I that game, see that. Just to keep his ego and confidence and mental in check because he's going to get torn apart. Yep. We'll see, though. And then, uh, yeah, we kind of already touched on it, but Zion out at least two weeks. We touched on it, like I said, in the end, going through the NBA there. Pelicans were a team I was looking out for this year. Thought they could make some noise. Granted, they did make the playoffs, but now without Zion, 
I'd rather just root for the Thunder because the Pelicans have zero shot without without Zion out there running around and, and doing stuff. Yeah. There. Pelicans are cooked. Pretty much. And then last one here. Ryan Garcia wins as a plus five hundred dog after showing up overweight. I that guy's electric, dude. I know he might have some CTE mental <laughs> shit going on, but he's for the kids. He does it for the kids. He goes out and shows up. He does it, you know, says all the right things. He's a little crazy, a little out of control. I, like, didn't even know about that. Dude, if I saw this guy's personality and then knew this fight was going on and then knew he was plus 500, I would have unloaded multiple units on this guy. I had no idea what was going on. So I missed out big time. Loser of the week, me, for not knowing who this guy is and what his game is about. Because he's electric, dude. And when is a Ryan Garcia Jake Paul fight? Is that ever going to happen? No, I don't think Jake Paul wants any part of that guy. I don't um, think he does either, but that has to happen. It, it would be a hell of a that, – that would be a hell of just – not even the fight, just the personalities leading up to that fight. Awesome. I don't think Jake Paul wants to mess around with that, though. Oh, no shot in hell. He might, he might actually kill Jake Paul. And that's not like that's not kill like beat him up. That's How like you murder. Well, claim credit and credibility if he doesn't fight Garcia. Well, I think Jake he already lost, so it's kind of we're kind of over the. It was one of the washed boxers. Tommy Fury. No, I think he, yeah he did lose to Tommy Fury. Is that who it was? Yeah. So that's his only loss. Yep. I mean, but then again, his wins are like against Nate Robinson and uh, Tyrone yeah, Lib- win- Woodley. It's not a good list of wins. Who else? Were there any good wins? Uh, he fought. Well, he fought Woodley, and I think he fought another UFC fighter. Yeah, Ben Atkinson or whatever the guy's name is. Yeah, maybe that was it. I don't remember his name, but that was like that guy was washed. Yeah, he's fighting Mike Tyson kind of soon. Is that who he's fighting? Yeah. <laughs> Like sixty year old Mike Tyson. Like why? What? Do you, what claim do you? What fame do you get out of that? Like what? Like what are you gonna puff your chest because you knocked out a sixty year old? Like dude, you're, you're a fucking loser. Oh, so he beat Nate Diaz. Yeah, but that also like Diaz isn't a boxer. He's a fucking street fighter. Yeah, I, I was thinking of um Anderson Silva. But so was also like fifty. You think mil. Jake Paul no no parts of Ryan Garcia? No chance in hell. That would be awesome. Yeah, Ryan Garcia also was supposed to throw out the first pitch of the Mets game, and the Mets kicked him out because they were they were. I think it was him and uh and, and Heaney that were going to do it like at the same time, and they were afraid of them like fighting on the mound. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> what would I, I, I the think the Mets did. Ryan. Alonzo has to run out there and break it up. I, I think Steve Cohen and the Mets, the Mets PR did imagine. <laughs> That's why they made the call. Did you imagine that Pete Alonzo and Francisco Alvarez have to run out there because they're the two biggest guys to break it up? Yeah, Pete Pete somehow tears his ACL breaking up the fight. Oh my god, that would be so unbelievable. But <laughs> Just like that, there you have it. It's Views from Section 400. As always, Matt and Brian bringing you some action-packed, uninterrupted sports conversation for the entire show. NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, everything in between. Michael of the week. Stay tuned next week for the winners and losers. And other than that, I got nothing. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. I don't have anything. <laughs>